Good morning from the annual Melbourne Cup long breakfast here in the Habtor Polo Club in Dubai. It's known, of course, as the race that stops the nation, but this morning it will be stopping around 200 Australian expats from getting to work on time. The Australian Business Council of Dubai's Melbourne Cup long breakfast has been an institution for more than a decade. But the sponsorship of Lexus ushers in a new era for the event, both in Melbourne and Dubai. It's a shift up in terms of the Lexus brand and the global exposure, so we are very excited to be here. Well, I, I think uh, the involvement of His Highness uh, in, the, in the race here is, is something that we follow very uh, you know, crucially, as especially we are part of the Alpha Tame group, so it's uh, something that makes us very proud and uh, you know, we try to follow suit wherever possible. Soggy conditions in Melbourne meant that those watching in Dubai had the best of the weather, but Flemington was unperturbed and 24 lined up for the race that stops the nation. They included three for Godolphin, for three different trainers. Cross Counter carried the hopes of Charlie Appleby. Best Solution lined up for Saeed bin Saroor, and Avilius represented James Cummings. And they're racing in the Melbourne Cup. Here comes Cross Counter, Cross Counter coming at Barbello. Cross Counter's flying, the Blue Army have done it at last. Cross Counter has won the Melbourne Cup. So, after more than two decades of trying, Godolphin finally have a Melbourne Cup winner. Cross Counter's winning run, timed to perfection by Kerry McAvoy, who was winning the race for a third time. Charlie Appleby gets to make history, becoming the first trainer to win this race and the Epsom Derby in the same year. Delighted. Look, this is, uh, this is everybody's dream. Uh, this is all down to Sheikh Mohammed. He's the one that's given us the encouragement to, 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 take, the, to take the chances in, in, uh, in what we do in, in, in internationally. And like I say, we've campaigned over the last three years now and you know, we've been competitive, but we've always learned each trip what horse we felt was going to be needed on a big day. And coming into the day, this horse ticked a lot of boxes. The magnitude of the win wasn't lost on those in Dubai. And John Butler, soon to leave his post as Victorian Commissioner, was delighted to see the blue silks home in front. Is it a fantastic? Uh, congratulations to His Highness. It's an amazing win, uh, and an Australian jockey as well. So a great combination. It really is, isn't it? And, and talk to us about this event because I think you've been coming right since the start, haven't you? Yes, this has become more and more popular. Of course, it's a public holiday in uh, Melbourne today, but you think it was a public holiday in Dubai because there's a lot of people here uh, having a wonderful early breakfast and watching the race. The important business of racing over with it was time for the hotly contested Fashions on the Field competition. The winner was Sophie Swart in a vintage outfit all the way from Melbourne, appropriately enough. There's actually a story behind it. My mother and I, every year when I went back to Australia, would uh, go to a vintage store in Melbourne where we pick up bits and pieces and she purchased a handbag for me and the hat and she passed away in January. So it's a little bit of a, um, you know, it's quite, I'm quite grateful to wear this today. And the dress is from a designer in New Zealand called Trelise Cooper. And the hat is so unique, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah, it's good fun. So I'm not sure whether it's 30s, 40s or 50s, but it's along those lines. So the Melbourne Cup and its breakfast are over for another year. The celebrations at Godolphin, you suspect, will continue a little longer.